What's going on, X community? Exo Stomp here, and today, people, we're gonna be doing the week three pickums, and of course, joining me like usual is Galaxy Ball. Hello, everyone. So, um, as you guys can see, these are our guesses for week two. Um, we both got our locks correct, which is pretty cool. However, we got no perfect scores, so. We did get, it's nice even tie though, nice even split of our correct predictions, which is pretty cool. So going straight into this, we are tied, which is really funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, majors is pretty tied. Uh, minors, well, you guys will just have to watch the minors one if you guys want to see that. But um, yeah, so this one's tied. Uh, this is going to be pretty interesting. The This week is actually... Um, Hopefully, we won't get another tie. Well, we'll see who's in, in first place after this. Yeah. So, yeah, let's move on here. We got the first matchup, which is the Hackensack Strikers, which is their new name, versus the Launching Dragapults. So, um, this team is... Hackensack Strikers is actually pretty... Um, I like the team versus uh, the Dragapults. I actually mm -hmm. like uh, the water typing because... The only real water resist here is Shaman, which, yeah, granted, Shaman is a good resist. However, the water types like Mantine and Kingler, they have coverage to hit grass. So I'm not sure how well it's Quags going to be taking those. So. Yeah, Quagsire's got water absorb, but you generally don't want to run that on Quagsire. You mm -hmm. want to run like Unaware to prepare for setup strats or something like that. Yeah. Plus, they have a decent amount of grass deck. They've got Rose Raid. I'm sure uh, Energy Ball and Chandelure. I'm sure one of the Mons have has Grass Knot or something. So, it's definitely difficult to uh, keep your um, Mons okay against water with uh, only Shaman and Quagsire here. Yeah. Um... As for like the Dragon Pulse side, I really do think that uh, Barbaracle is actually pretty nice here because if it can get up a Shell Smash, I don't think anything outspeeds it. I mean, maybe Sneasel with like, well, of course, anything with a Scarf like above, I think, 100 could definitely outspeed the Barbaracle. However, I do think Barbaracle uh, does do a lot of damage with its stabs plus like Earthquake. I think it can dig a really nice hole. Um, that the Strikers, I'm not sure, will be able to get out of. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing, because Registeel is a super beefy guy. Um, if they run like a defensive Registeel against the Barbarical, I wonder if, it, if Barbarical would be able to push through um, with a Shell Smash. Because <laughs> one does a lot of damage, but the other eats a lot of damage. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the numbers add up there, but Registeel might save them from that. Yeah, I think the combination of Corsola plus Barbarical is really nice because the Registeel will probably be pressing Body Press on the Barbarical, so you can easily go into Corsola and stuff and play around with that. But there's plenty of options for both teams here um, that you can play around both, uh, both offense yeah. and the defensive side. So it's actually, I think it's going to be a decently close game here. Yeah, I agree with that. Um... So I would say, I, I think I like the options on the Strikers a bit more, so I'm going to give them a 2-0. That's fair, yeah. Um, hmm. I'm going to give the Strikers a... Oh, this is tough. I'll give them a 3-0 this game. Actually, let me write this down so that I don't forget. <laughs> okay. Alright. So you said uh strikers uh 3-0. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let me do this. Strikers 3-0 and I oh, no, I said yeah. I said 2-0. -oh. You said 2-0. -oh. Okay, cool. Alright. The next battle here is <laughs> You know what, why don't you start with this one? Oh, this one looks fun. Zorox versus the Dark Titans. Yeah, you don't say the so, name, I see you. 
What? Ro what do you mean? Ro Roman. <laughs> hey, it's it's fine. Uh, we know what they are. Yeah. Um, this one's pretty interesting because uh, dark types do have to watch out for both Persian and Durant, who are like right in the middle of the speed gap between their Rabambi and Morpico, um, which is a little hard to manage, I feel. Because they do have Moltres to deal with the Durant, but I feel like Durant might be able to do a lot here, from what I can see. Um, Durant... See, but Durant gets walled by Steelix. That is pretty true. And the Moltres yeah. is there. I think I, I might have Rockslide, so again, Steelix is sort of there for that. Um, I do like the Durant, though. Like, Durant is pretty decent it does have superpower so it does hit um the team uh daddy's archetypes pretty hard uh swampert is also pretty nice here um the thing is like stuff like the snorlax the snorlax um can have some fun times because it does uh only it's only weak to fighting and uh, i mean we said this last week but fighting is really good against um, DDA here, but Girder is not the best fighting type. Then again, it did get four kills last uh, last match, so I, you know what, I could just be talking out of my ass, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, I mean, this one's pretty interesting. Um, Sticky webs on the dark types team can hinder Zorox pretty severely, I feel. Hmm. Yeah. What do they have to remove it? They have Girder. Yep, that's it. <laughs> so, so I feel like if if Dark Types brings Rabambi, they're gonna have a very easy time with uh, the early game getting yeah. those webs up. Oh, I think a hundred percent Rabambi is coming. It has enough coverage to I think uh, warrant it coming. Plus, it does have webs, like you said, and Did I it think it Girder hard. Does it have any like good moves against Girder? M Moonblast? It's a fairy type. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah that, would, uh, that would be pretty good. So yeah, yeah I don't know. So if Zarex are gonna have a bit of struggle here, they're gonna have to answer that somehow. Yeah, and if something like, I feel like Vanellox also has some fun times just clicking Blizzard, uh, like Specs Blizzard. There's not many mods that want to come into that. Maybe like an AV sent the Scorch, but that wouldn't make sense because then Steelix can just set up rocks and like, there goes fifty percent of his health. So again. This is. I feel like DDA has a better matchup here, but uh, I'll let you guess first. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I locked on DDA last time, but I kind of want to lock on DDA again. That's fair. I, Go ahead. I think I think DDA's got like got this in the bag. Honestly, no offense to the Zorox, but this is a really hard match to go against. I'm gonna lock DDA at a four zero. At a four zero. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel like what's going to happen is um, DDA is going to either set up webs or fake out setting up webs and just kind of force Zorox to answer and probably just go from there. Honestly, it's so tough here because I feel like Saint isn't really going to lose a match. However, DDA luck... Uh, everyone knows about DDA luck. He he gets a crit on a move that can't crit. Like it's just it's the weirdest thing. All right, so I think I think it's gonna be tough. Like, cause Saint is arguably one of the best battlers in the majors division, and again, DDA DDA is a good battler, but he also gets lucky. Um. Yeah, which you're like tops that off. You're just gonna miss a defog <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's really tough. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna go on a limb here, and I'm gonna say somehow, uh, the Zoroarks win 2-0. Somehow, I, I can't tell you how yet because I have no idea. But I, I'm just, I'm thinking. All right. Thank you, luck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the next match here for this week. Uh, the California Q fans versus the Gibby Gittles. So. Um, I actually, I actually really like uh, the Gibby Gibbles matchup here. Stuff like the 
Serena actually has some moves to hit a decent amount of the month. <clears throat> um, and I do like the Mudsdale as well. It does have high horsepower, so that won't get affected by the grassy terrain if Tweed does end up running that. Uh, but yeah, on the other side, Tweed does have stuff like the Alola Marowak, which can sort of just come in and claim a kill every time with something like Flare Blitz. Uh, Miltank is there, but Alola Marowak does have some fighting coverage, so it's going to be pretty tough to switch into. Not to mention the Thwacky Slurp of combo. I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking that's really, <laughs> that's really, really scary. I mean, uh, for those who don't know, I I was in a, a match against the Slurp Puff. Uh, I didn't realize how scary Slurp Puff is. <laughs> I, I definitely uh, no longer underestimate that mon because woof, that thing has a lot of options. Yeah. And with its unburden and the grassy seed. Oh, what do the gibble? How do the gibbles answer that? Um, depending on if it's special or physical, I think. I think it, you know what? It is pretty tough. I don't really see many options here. I mean, if it's special, um, if it's like special, it's got like energy ball to answer mm. mudsdale or giga drain. I can't remember which one I had. It's energy. Um, and surf. Energy ball. Uh, yep, surf. Is also really nice. Believe it as flamethrower mean, for the double aid. If it's special, it just sort of kills that thing. Yeah, I mean, and then even if it's if it it would be better probably to run it special given their mm -hmm. defensive balls on the gibble side. Right. But they might gibbles might predict that and run a bunch of special sets, but then Q fans might predict that and just run a physical. <laughs> so so it honestly because of how many options Slurpuff has that makes it really scary. Not to mention the revenge killers that um q fans have in response to that uh hmm. makes it pretty scary i don't know I, I i do like q fans odds here okay do you have a uh, I, guess yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say it's gonna be close i'm gonna say early game there will be a lot of fast kills and then it'll kind of whittle down at the back so a 1-0 to the q fan side okay yeah I could definitely see a 1 0 happening. Um, I feel like most games that Twee uh, plays, it ends up somehow in like a 50 50, and it's usually like a 1 0 to whoever wins. Um, now, I actually like um, the Gibby Gibbles matchup here because, yeah, Slip Ruff is scary here. However, stuff like Spadef Double Aid can pretty easily eat up a hit with a Violite and Iron Head and uh do a lot of damage to that slurp off so I, I think i think you're underestimating double aid here i think that's what it is maybe i haven't seen double aid really all that much so that's very possible if if it's strong and hopefully it's able to uh pull ahead that's for sure okay uh so you said 102 uh q fans q fans all right i'm gonna say a I'm going to say a 2-0 to the Gibby Gibbles. Okay. All right. Great, great. No locks yet. That's fine. That's fine. Still got a I few locked more. I on, uh, on DDA. You locked? Yes. Oh, see, I don't listen very well. All right. Let me... Uh... <laughs> we did this last time. I'm pretty sure you misheard me on DDA also last time. Oh, Forget my it. God. All right. Well, all right. I, like, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Okay. I didn't use mine yet, though. All right. Chicago Shamans versus the Fiery Path Flygons. This is going to be a really fun team. Uh, oh, really, this one really fun looks, matchup. Bro. Yeah, this one looks really fun. There's a lot of... They both have really fast mons. Hmm. Um, which means this is... Plus, their their slower mons are... Back. Oh, devastating punch. <laughs> oh, man, this one... Oof. I could see so many different mons coming here. Yo, you know what I see? <laughs> The Battle of the Doug Trios. Which one's better? Right? <laughs> Probably the normal one. Probably? Thing. But, you know, you forget it. You know, Steel Type's a pretty good type. Is it, though? Hey, it hits the Clefairy. You you know how scary Clefairy is. I don't. Oh. <laughs> alright, alright. Well, you gotta watch Cross's uh, game. Anyways, that, that's I for mine. Very... It's very meme -y, that's for sure. I don't but, know, man. It's really good. Shell smashing. Anyways. 
Um, so the, I, okay, so looking on the Shaman side, last week was pretty hard for them because they did verse, um, these Orowarks, which, again, Saint is a, an extremely good battler, so if you don't prep, uh, well against that team, um, he's just gonna wipe the floor with you. But, I do think that the Flygons and the Shamans, they definitely have the same, um, the same sort of, uh, skill level. So I definitely think that this is going to be a very close match because, like, even, even looking at the, uh, even looking at the bottom tier Pokemon, like the Koalava, like Koalava, Koalava can spam can Eruption Koalava a few times. Did. Yeah, I could see Koalava doing a lot here, honestly. Um, yeah. even something like if, if the Flygons decide to go some kind of very hyper defense, all style lineup dotler might even come out um <laughs> like honest honestly i don't think that's that bad of an idea because dotler's got sticky web right mm -hmm. um so some kind of uh slowly whittling down uh option because they've got dreadgon agron gigalith dotler that's a lot of defense um not to mention crobat and, and blastoise are also pretty bulky Hmm. Uh, but then, on the other hand, they've got really fast pivots, they've got Rotom, they've got Dead Trio, so... It's, it's gonna be tough. I I honestly do not know of any, like, one Mon that is absolutely coming to this match. Um, I have one, but I'm just gonna guess. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you what. Okay, fair enough. Um, what do you think here? Because I'm a little clueless. I think the Flygons are going to win here. Yeah? Yeah, that's that's my prediction. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the Shamans are gonna bring Koalava and Koalava's gonna wreck. I think Shamans are gonna win here. Okay. Uh what are you looking at? I'll say uh two oh. I know it's safe. <laughs> Again two actually that's okay, I just did two O's so. there. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna say Flagons, I'm gonna say... Oh, man. I'm gonna say, uh, 3-0. Okay. Alright. <laughs> hey, next battle. Oh, hey, it's me. Alright, you started this one. Ooh, okay, so this is interesting. Um... I look at the Mars Shadows, and I'm like, how do they answer your mons? They've got a very good fire type, which is pretty painful for, like, your Sceptile, your Masquerade, your Scavalier. Um, they've also got the pretty strong and fast dragon flying type Noivern, but uh, you do not have an ice type, which makes that a little awkward to handle. Uh, you do have Weezing. Um, which is nice, and I'm not sure how much ice tech you have, to be honest. Sloking might have something, but honestly, you don't. It doesn't look like you have a lot of ice options, so that might be a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. um, I can definitely see Driftblim coming, um, so you don't have a ghost type either. I don't think. Yeah, you don't have a ghost type either. Um, so it might be a little bit tricky to handle some kind of Calm Mind Drift Limb setup. Mm. But you do have Raichu, which makes that a little bit easier to handle. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely see Marshallos bringing some things to make, uh, make your setup a little bit tricky. But on the other hand, you have a lot of options as well here. Um, I mean, Tyrantrum just bulldozes over stuff like Delphox and Cryognal pretty yep. hard, I feel like. Okay. Um, I do think uh, Vorian might give it some trouble, but it can also handle Drifblim pretty well. Probably has... Yeah, it could just Earthquake Togedemaru pretty hard. The Tyrantrum, I feel like, is pretty strong here. Yeah. Um, and Magminar also has some nice uh, options as well. I don't know, this one seems pretty close. Hmm. Mm, what 
what do you think? What? How do you think about your uh, your chances here? I think my matchup is good. Um, I know that Cambet knows how to play low tier, uh, which is it scares me because he might bring some weird set that I'm not aware of. However, um, stuff like I don't really see that many answers to Raichu, Alolan Raichu. Like I don't if 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 I bring specs or nasty plot or you know whatever like the only thing i could really see here i mean i don't oh, know could like like a super bulky cryogonal with haze stop you or something like that uh i don't think so no you think it's too powerful i i, I honestly don't think so because even even if it even if it lives somehow and it hazes the electric terrain's still gonna be up, and like, what is it gonna do? I just, yeah. Now, then again, like, there's stuff that uh, I could see that definitely can have a chance to wallet. Like, Lorantis is there, but I, th I feel like um, Raichu has some coverage for it. Um, also, if it's running like a Volt Switch set and uh, Lorantis comes in, stuff like. Uh, mag mortar just gets a free switch in or you know uh this cavalier can just come in pretty freely and, and laurentis is staying in on that so i i don't see many options for Cambet, but again i haven't mocked or or really done too much building yet so we'll just have to see um yeah yeah i do i do think that you definitely have the advantage here i feel like Cambet has to pull uh out something tricky to surprise you and that's how they would get ahead mm. um so i'm gonna give you a 3-0 3-0 okay you're uh all right you know what? it's better than 2-0 all right thank you thank you <laughs> um as i said before i know Kambat knows knows his stuff i'm just afraid of me throwing away my win con or my like last week, me throwing away his Cavalier against the freaking Comfy. So I, <laughs> ah man, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give myself a 1-0 because I know Cambat knows his stuff and I'm really afraid. Even though I feel like I have a good matchup, I'm gonna somehow miss something. So yeah. Right. So you said 3-0 and uh, I said. One. Oh, can't type. Okay. Next. All right. The Auckland Licky Pies versus Kyrax Crooks. Um. All right. So, looking at the matchup here, I do like Kyrax matchup a little bit better than the Licky Pies matchup. Uh, stuff like the Talon Flame, uh, if it's like a defensive Talon Flame set, and Ambipom is this fake out tail slap set. Uh, it can just get flame bodied and get burnt. Um, can also burn stuff like the the Absol again if it's if it's pretty defensive. And there's a few things that I think could be annoying for the Leaky Pies that uh, the Crooks definitely have. Um, Heracross, Heracross. Oh yeah, it's pretty fun here. You can just sort of spam knock off until all the items are gone. You just set up like rocks. I mean, yeah. What is what walls a, a guts Heracross in this situation? Uh, a Guts Heracross... I mean, there's, there's, there's some things that take hits. Like, if there's, like, a defensive Flurgus, it could maybe take a hit. I mean, if it's, like, a Swords Dancing Guts Heracross, probably not. It doesn't probably doesn't live a facade, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but if the... If Kyra can actually set up rocks and able to... If he's able to get up... Get off some knockoffs against, like, the Articuno and, um, you know, the... the even if the Typhlosion has it or, or Beetle has one, that Stealth Rock chip is going to be super useful against a bulky team like Licky Pies. Yeah, I do think they're pretty weak to knock off here um, because I feel like the Crooks can set up uh, Stealth Rock pretty reliably. Um, and I mean, you want to hit knock off on Rhydon, you want to hit knock off probably on Jellicent too. Um, and then Orb Beetle and Articuno obviously to get their boots off. Mm -hmm. So I feel like 
that might be the winning play here, as well as bringing Lycanroc and Celeroc. Mm. Hurts a lot. Yeah. I feel like Celeroc's really strong here. I don't know. I I kind of <laughs> I kind of feel like this might be a six up. Oh, oh! I, you think I it's think gonna be a six up? I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call this one a six up on the crook side. Damn. Um, I'm sorry, Licky Pies, but I feel like something's gonna happen here, where the crooks are gonna get ahead, and it's just gonna be really hard to recover. Damn. Okay. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be a six zero, but I definitely think the crooks are also gonna win. Um. By the way, shout out to the artist that uh the, that made Kyrax uh logo. <coughs> Me. No. Great. Uh, thank you. It man. really does. It really does look good. Oh. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, I'll I'll leave the link to his channel in the, in the description. All right, guys, just uh press on that. All right. Anyways, um, so. Yeah, but I definitely think that his team looks like it dominates. Um, I feel like Skuntank. Skuntank just has fun clicking uh, Sludge Bomb over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and if the Bronzong wants to come in to take a Sludge Bomb, hi, I have Dark Pulse and Knock Off too. Like, so it, there's not many things that want to come in to any of Kyrak's team. So I'm going to give Kyrak a 4-0 and I'm actually going to lock on this one. Oh, very nice. Um, cause, yeah, I, I know Kyrak knows how to play his low tiers, and, uh, yeah. For, uh, you said 6-0, right? Yeah. Alright, cool, cool. Let's move on to the second to last one, which is, ooh, this is gonna be Burger versus Dinny, aka the Denver Drowsies versus a Swan Sea Soul Laser. So, uh, why don't you start with this one, actually? Um, so, this one's interesting because on one side you have some really nice potential on the Drowsies. I mean, Comfy and Porygon Z, really strong special attackers. Uh, Palisand's a great wall. Um, Paparaj is a very nice physical attacker. Guzzlord can be extremely hard to break through. Mm. So, um... As for fairy options on the Soul Blizzard side, I mean, Clef Key is really strong as well, uh, which makes Guzzlord a little difficult to find a way to come in until that Clef Key is dealt with. Um, Zoroark can also make it really hard to uh, bring things in correctly, which I feel like that's going to be really important because the Drowsies, uh, especially things like Comfy and Porygons, they really enjoy that one turn of having a free, either setting up a nasty plot or a calm mind, or just kind of getting in comfortably. Um, and Zorak makes that really hard to know for sure if you're safe. Because uh, you might just get suddenly Dark Pulse or something like that, or Flamethrower, who knows. Yeah, so um, I do want to mention this. Uh, so Dini does have some uh usage within the uh, blah, 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 with zoroark in the draft league format um and i definitely think that he can maybe pull off some some really fun tricks uh last week he ran heavy duty boots zoroark uh and he disguised it as a linoon which well number one they're both weak to fighting so that that's pretty scary uh number two Heavy Duty Boost Linoon doesn't exist, so it sort of was like obvious that it was Zoroark. But there are some really cool things you can do. You can send in a Zoroark um, disguised as like a uh, freaking, I don't know, oh, can't think right now. As... I could see like Zoroark being disguised as like, kind of, uh, as like a Hariyama, mm -hmm. like a psychic hit or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. That's like. That's the, the best part. And then also, um, a lot of people use it. So, you come in on a fighting type. Drowsies has two. And you use, like, your... You send in your quote-unquote Mesprit, or quote-unquote Klefki, or whatever, Vileplume. And then they're like, okay, well, I'm a fighting type. I have to switch out and get out of here. You have to switch, basically, into your Zoroark on a fighting type to make it... Th to, make, to make them think, okay, that's real. Why would that not be real? They switch out. You set up a nasty plot and then you just win. 
I love Zoroark. Um, I think it's it's super fun to play around with. Mind games are always fun to do, um, and I think that Denny definitely knows how to how to do mind games with it. I think last week was just he wasn't in the right mindset, but hopefully, I think this game he could definitely pull some shenanigans and uh, maybe win. We'll see. I definitely hope so. Um, I am going to give Soul Blazers a one uh, zero here. A one zero? That's that's fair because I I could see that happening. Oh my god, I really want Denny to win this because I really want Zoroark to just like somehow sweep. Um, it's gonna be tough though, cause like, I mean, Guzzlord's a thing and Guzzlord can just eat hits, but if that thing gets chipped, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna give the Denver Drowsies a... Oh man, I really don't want to go that high. But I'm gonna say 3-0, because I'm not wow. 100 percent sure. The betrayal. I know. I really want look, I really want Denny to win here. However, it's Burger we're talking about. So Um So you said uh Denny what one all right? Yep, one all right. Okay. And I'll make this easier next time for myself. I just forgot to do this, so uh okay all right the last match of the majors is going to be wicked weaviles versus our new team the oh god why do you guys always have to make these uh, um do you know how to say this the slur oh boy <laughs> so they're actually uh i'll just i'll have some backstory here um they are actually a french battler so they don't really associate themselves with us English people. Um, <laughs> but uh, they were able to actually take over um, the Seattle Stumpfist team. And so um, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, I do... Uh, I'm just going to call them the Slurpuffs because... Um, the Slurpuffs team... Slur... Slur... Slurpuffy. Sir, uh, Slurpuffy? No, I'm not even <laughs> Sir, slurp, yeah, it's probably some pronunciation. Yeah, it's uh, we'll just say slurpuffier. How about that? That's, that's that's there you go. All right, so they did pick up cutie flat, which you know gives them webs, which actually does help I out. I like that. I right. mean, cutie fly might just end up as a suicide lead sometimes, mm -hmm. but honestly, suicide lead setting up webs for this team isn't terrible. Mm hmm. Yeah. I can definitely see like Suelo doing quite a lot under webs, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and it might need that support against Weaviles. Because, like, a choice, uh, choice scarf sock or something like that, possibly. I'm not sure the speed ties. Suelo might just be faster. Um, but even like a choice Salazzle would give them a bit of trouble. Okay. Slazzle does do quite a lot of damage. Pretty scary. Yeah, Slazzle. Um, oh man, Slazzle. Yeah, Slazzle does a lot of damage here. Stuff like the Tentacruel, I guess, could come in, but Toxic is a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty tricky because I'm, I'm just kind of looking through their team, looking for any kind of reliable recovery on both ends. Espeon does have Wish, I think. It's not that great of a wish holder yeah we got um, like this hgy with roost as well and vagabond with roost so weavos does have a decent amount of recovery but it's solo um, he's not running recovery he's running max special attack and max attack on everything all right yeah he is very expensive <laughs> i was gonna say you could play a very safe game with salazzle and chipping down your opponent mm. i don't know if so We'll see. Um, it, it could definitely happen, but I think I'm, I'm ready to, to vote here. Sure. Yeah, you can go first. So I think that the Slurpuff Yays are going to win. I Because I, I've seen that they know how to prep. They know how to definitely play. So that's, well, that's, well, that's why they I put them in majors. Um, sure. So I think they might be able to play around... Weavile's team. I do like how um, the Phalanx has a decent matchup here. Has 
uh, enough um, moves. Like you just do no retreat, close combat, iron head, and like throat chop or something to hit the decidui, and then you just sort of run through the team. I I really like their matchup, so I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna go out on the limb. I'm gonna say four zero. Interesting. Um, now I'm always a fan of hyper offense teams. I just I just find them really fun to watch because usually they're all or nothing. Either one team gets crushed or the other gets crushed. Yeah. Um, I was actually gonna give a four zero to Solo because I think. Uh, Ooh. Um, it's really gonna like it's either gonna be a four zero to the Slurpuffs or a four zero to the Weaviles. I think. So yeah, it's only fair. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Well, um, that was the week three uh, pickums. If you guys uh, enjoyed, of course, please leave a like. If you're new, please subscribe. And um, yeah, I guess for the majors, we'll see you next week, and we'll see what happens. Good luck in your games, folks. Yep. All right, guys. Peace.